It was on a moonless night in the early summer months of 1993 that Jennifer Erdman and her best friend Elizabeth Pena would depart from the Spring Hill apartment complex off of West 34th Street in Houston, Texas at around 11 p.m. in the evening. The girls were returning from a pool party and they wanted to make it home before Elizabeth's 11.30 p.m. curfew. Since they were running a bit behind schedule, they decided to take a shortcut through the Clearbrook apartment complex, which would lead them out to a railroad bridge and then out to a trail known as the White Oak Bayou through T.C. Chester Park. This shortcut had the potential of saving the girls about 10 minutes over their normal route. However, on this particular night, while walking along the bayou, these girls would be viciously attacked by a local youth gang who would rape, assault, and kill the girls, leaving their bodies in a forest area near the south entrance of the park. This is truly one of the most violent and horrific tragedies that I've run across. And this video series is aimed at providing a level of clarity to the Elizabeth Pena and Jennifer Ertman case. Please strap yourself in as we get ready to dive into part one of three. It's June 24th, 1993, and the day starts out like it normally would for the soon-to-be high school sophomores. The girls were in the midst of enjoying their summer vacation and are even planning to hang out later in the afternoon at Elizabeth's house. As luck would have it, they're going to get the chance to attend a pool party that's being held by their friend Gina Escamilla over at the Spring Hill apartment complex. At 4.15 in the afternoon, Jennifer's father, Randy Ertman, would drive his daughter over to Elizabeth Pena's house. Elizabeth lived about four and a half miles away from Jennifer on a street called Lamont Lane. It was there that he would say goodbye to Jennifer and the girls would spend the next few hours at Elizabeth's house as they eagerly looked forward to their plans for the evening. 14-year-old Jennifer was the only child of Randy and Sandra Erdman. She was described by those who knew her as being caring, intelligent, and had a good sense of humor. Jennifer had a love for jewelry, often wearing multiple necklaces, earrings, and rings. Fashionable but modest, Jennifer was also known for being a caring friend. 16-year-old Elizabeth Pena was the oldest of three children. Born to Adolf and Melissa Pena, Elizabeth had gone through a brief streak of teenage rebellion before entering Waltrip High School in the fall of 1992. Jennifer and Elizabeth would meet in their freshman year and quickly became close friends. Despite being just over a year younger than Elizabeth, her family would notice the positive influence that Jennifer was having on their daughter. They were genuinely thrilled that their daughter had found such a great friend. At approximately 8 o'clock in the evening, Elizabeth's mother would drive the girls to the Silver Creek Apartments on Mangum Road. Before dropping them off, Elizabeth would promise her mother that they would be back in time to make her curfew. Feeling satisfied with their agreement, Elizabeth's mother would drive off, leaving the girls to hang out with her friend, Gina Escamilla, for the next few hours. Meanwhile, in a neighboring suburb of Oak Forest, a small group of street thugs were getting ready to hold a gang initiation ceremony for 17-year-old Raul Villarreal. Villarreal had expressed interest in joining this group, who jokingly called themselves the Black and White Gang. They were a mix of teens, mostly between the ages of 17 and 19, and had a gang leader named Peter Cantu. Cantu had a long history of violent and disorderly conduct, and due to his frequent arrests, which involved stealing, car theft, assault, and even murder, he was well known to the local authorities. His ideal way of testing out the newcomer Raul Villarreal was to have him fight everyone in his gang. Peter would recruit the help of his friends, as well as one particularly vicious criminal named Sean Derrick O'Brien. 
The gang would get liquored up and would drive over to O'Brien's residence at the Clearbrook apartment complex. After recruiting O'Brien, the gang would head through a broken part of the fence that would lead them out across the railroad tracks and into the park to begin their brawl. Meanwhile, on the other side of West 34th Street, Elizabeth, Jennifer, and Gina would decide to go over to Gina's friend Chris's house. Chris lived in an apartment complex that was just down the street from Gina. It would take the girls only minutes to arrive at the Spring Hill apartment complex. Once there, they would hang out by the pool. It was now approaching 11 o'clock and Elizabeth's curfew was coming up fast. This made Jennifer Ertman nervous. She didn't want her friend to get into trouble for missing her curfew, so she mentioned to Elizabeth that they should probably get going. The girls would head off on foot back towards Elizabeth's house. Their friend Gina Escamilla would accompany them at this time. Alright guys, so that does it for part one of this video series. Check back in for part two, where we'll be discussing the different pathways that the girls had available to them and also the inherent danger of walking through this park late at night. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you at the next one.